First of all, congrats to Terry Hughes, uh, you know, to come on the road and shoot the basketball as well as they did tonight. Um, that was something they've not been doing, especially from the three-point line. Uh, but they made them today. Um, I thought we were ready to play. Uh, I thought there were some good things that we did. I thought we generated some really good looks early in the game. Uh, but we didn't make them, and they did. Uh, you know, I love my team. I think we're pressing. Uh, I think we're putting pressure on ourselves, um, especially here, because uh, we've not shot the basketball well here. Um, but I do like the shots that we were generating. Uh, you know, we have to continue to be tougher, to be together, and to fight through it, and to figure out a way uh, to cross that bridge and to become the team that we want to be and that we think that we can be. Jalen, what did you what did you feel in that second half that helped helped you kind of get a run going? I just wanted to win. That was the only thing on my mind. I wanted to give us a spark, be that guy that just you know stepped up, try and ignite guys. That was really it. I just wanted to be that spark for everybody. Other parts of your game that you feel have started to like become more consistent as you've gotten more time to play with the guys in live action. Um, I mean, I'm just all around healthier, so. I just feel more comfortable out there with everybody. I mean, everybody's pretty comfortable with each other, so um, that's just really it. Jalen, do you, do you feel the pressure that your coach kind of talked about where, you know, a lot of people aren't making shots, you guys haven't won some games on the home floor? Do you, do you feel that when you're out there? I don't think it's pressure from coach. Um, we all want to win, and that's just, that's just the bottom of it. We just want to win. It's not pressure from him because – we expect that from our coach. He he is our he's our example. We know what he's done in the past. He expects that he holds us to a high standard, and we just want to go out and hold that standard for him and for ourselves at the same time. I wasn't necessarily saying that he's putting that pressure. It's just more you know you guys are you're competitive. You want to make sure. I mean, how do you put that frustration in the back burner and not allow that to affect your play? Mature. It's just mature. It's it's a next play thing. It's a mindset that uh, a lot of people. Guy, we have to get used to. If we're not making shots, we still got to make sure we get back on the other end and don't let it affect all of the rest of our play. Jim, it seemed like in the second half you were progressively getting more and more aggressive as more shots went down. Were guys telling you, hey, you have the green light, you need to go, or were they just kind of finding you? It's not necessarily them telling me. We all trust each other with the ball in our hands. So it, it's not. it's just not a solo thing. Everybody trusts each other at the same time. What are you guys talking about on the floor when you know shots aren't falling and you're trying to find something to be consistent to wait to shock you guys out of where the other team's got runs going? Get a defensive stop. That's uh that's when we're when we're not hitting shots, that's all it is. Get it back on the defensive end, try and make up on it on that side. Jeff to what Jalen was saying, did you find the team that the pressing on offense is leading over to defense Yeah, well? I think so. You know, they, I thought in the first half, I thought they made some really tough shots. They made a couple of shots at the end of the shot clock. Um, coming into the game in conference play, they were making four threes a game. You know, and they made six in the first half. Um, <clears throat> and some of them were deflating. You know, we, we, when I say we're pressing, then we foul Copeland shooting a three. You know, there. Like, that's what, it, like, we, we want it so bad, and they do. Like, they really do. But I just think when it's not going our way, we we have, it was a really interesting answer and a great answer from an 18-year-old about we have to mature. We collectively as a group have to mature, and we have to understand that we have to do it together. Again, all these, they are really good guys. I love being around them. They want to be really, really good, and they're searching right now. Like, we're searching, um, all of us. And I have to do a better job with them. Um, but hopefully, as we go forward, we can get back into the rhythm offensively that we were in earlier this year. Again, I thought we generated really good looks early in the game. We, we just, they wouldn't go down for us.
Jeff, when you guys aren't able to hit your shots, and this is a team, when you're hitting shots, everyone feeds off of it, and, and it, it clearly generates a lot of things. Is there something you can do to kind of shock things back into that, you know, more things to create? That's a great question. It's something I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out the buttons to push. Obviously, what I've done has not worked. I'm going to continue to try. Um, you know, we're going to continue to believe in them, uh, to try to encourage them, to tell them the truth. Um you know, we have to collectively, as a as a team, coaches, players, we, we have to be tougher. We have to be mentally tougher and we have to be physically tougher. Um, I thought in the first half there were about five opportunities for us to dive and get a loose ball, and we didn't do it. Like, that has to become second nature to us. Um, you know, we, we, we can't have guys where we're – they take the shot, and we're running down the court. We had a great play in the second half where Zach blocked the shot. Ish went to, went to go save it, and we're running down the court. Like those plays, we have. that's what I mean about the mental toughness to stay in it. You know, uh, it, it, and so we just, you know, collectively as a group, we all have to be better, and I have to be better for them. Jeff, I forget the exact phrase you used about Blake after the Louisville game, about him being, was it all in or on or locked in or something like that? I'm not sure. Okay, <laughs> but nonetheless, when he's going through this shooting slump that's now about a month long, mm -hmm. I mean, how do you keep him from not getting in his own head and it affecting his confidence? Yeah, well, I don't know if it affects his confidence. I think what it can do with Blake is to make him press a little bit more. Because there's no one that wants it more than him for this program, for this city, for this university, for this student section. You know, he is the most appreciative and grateful guy. And uh, look, as a player, you know when you're struggling. And sometimes you try to go get it even more. I thought the way he started the game, he posted, he got to the basket. You know, he made a three on an offensive rebound. I thought he did a good job there, but when we were struggling to make shots, then as 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 the best player, as a leader, you kind of feel like, well, maybe I have to do a little bit more. I have to. And again, he got some good looks. He 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 just missed them, just like we all did. And so we just have to keep encouraging him. We need him to be him. Um, and those shots and plays will eventually fall. But we can't allow missed shots to hurt us on the other end too. Like we have to stay locked in and dialed in there with what we're doing, with the coverages, with guarding the ball, with being in the gaps, whatever it is, our game plan, you know, we have to do a good job of doing that. Hey, Continue you, to do that. You mentioned two times how you have to be better. What exactly does that entail for you? I just have to coach him better. I have to, you know, I, I, I think we're prepared. Obviously we have to do a better job there. Um, try to help him be confident. You know, believe in them, love on them even more, uh, especially times right now when, you know, we're struggling. If you're short on mental toughness, how do you get it back? You just got to keep fighting. No one can help you with that. You have to help yourself with that. Are there like the 10-24 mark in the first half, I think the 6-20 mark, scoreless drought. That's a trend that's happening. A few games this season. Is there something that's specifically happening, or is it just? I don't think. I mean, we were up six at that point. I thought, you know, we had, we had, you know, we were making some shots. Then we came out and we didn't make shots. We got to the foul line. We missed front end of one on one. Um, went one for two at the line another time. You know, we 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 have to have collectively as a group toughness to be able to step up and make plays. Yeah. Well, Starling is a guy who was struggling coming into today, and he had a really big game. I mean, what did you see from him? Anything different as what you saw on tape? No, or? that seems to be a trend against us. Yeah. You know, Benny Williams had 25 points coming into this game in conference play. 15 were, were against us. He hadn't made a three. He, he made one today. Um, Starling's a talented kid. He was a top 30 kid coming out of high school, um, and he was able to get the spots. He was in a good rhythm. He was confident. He saw the basketball go in. And when you're a talented player, if you see it go in a few times, that, that gives you even more confidence. We have to have better resistance, though. And that's what I mean about the physicality uh, that we have to have defensively um, to be able to stand guys up and contest guys without fouling. Like, I think we I think we fouled three jump shooters today. Like, we have to have the discipline to not do that. 
What's Bub's demeanor right now? I mean, he shot 0 for 10, you know, obvious struggles. How have you seen him try to fight through and find himself? Yeah, you know, he's obviously down because he's a talented player and he's a good player and, you know, he's had an outstanding season thus far, but he's struggling. Um, you know, Bub is a confident kid, but look, when you're 18 years old and you're a freshman and you're struggling and, you know, at times you can feel like you're letting your team down. The thing that I constantly tell him is that, you know, just like when we were winning and he was playing well, he wasn't winning for us. We were winning. And so it's not a singular thing. Um, he knows that he has to be better and he will be better and we'll help him with that. Uh, but he has to remain confident in his work, confident in the process, and uh, continue to keep swinging. You've been a coach. you coached through so many seasons. You've, played, you've, been, you've been coached through so many seasons. What are things that you can do in those moments to kind of, when, when things just are, are not falling, to kind of shock a team out of whatever funk that they're in? Have you, what are the things that you've experienced? That's a good question. I mean, to me, I think a lot of it, at least in my experience as a player, it was players that did it. I mean, I think I played for arguably the – I don't think it's arguably. I think he's the best coach ever. I was on a team that went 2-14 and 14 in the league in 13 and 18. The year before, we played for the national championship. The next year, we started 0-4 in the conference. Th there wasn't much that Coach did. He believed in us. But it wasn't much that he did. Like, there was a toughness – with our group, and we were not the most talented group, uh, but there was a t that we were older, <laughs> but there was a toughness with Chris Collins, who's the coach at Northwestern as a senior, with myself. You know, we had been through hard times, and it was just a thing where it's like we got to fight, we have to get out of it. Now, coach and the coaching staff believed in us. They, you know, believe it or not, we put in a flex offense at Duke to go play NC State for that game. I don't think we ran it well, but there was a toughness that we had, and you had to overcome it. We finished 8-8 uh, eight and eight in the league, made the tournament, and we won the ACC the next year. So there was a toughness. Sometimes you have to go through crap. Sometimes you have to go through hard things to learn. And, you know, we are a group, we are a team that, and I don't use this as a crutch. So you guys that are from here, you know, like, look, we're in experience. It's not an excuse. It's an, exp it's, it's an explanation. We have to go through and we're going through something really hard right now. And so this, this will teach us a lot individually and collectively as a group, because that's life. You go through stuff. You got to fight through. Sometimes the only thing people can do to help you is to believe in you and to encourage you. But in my experience, there comes a point where you're just like enough's enough and you fight through it and you, you figure it out. And so that's what we have to do. We're going to continue to encourage them, to coach them, to believe in them, to tell them the truth, to watch film, to continue to teach. And I do think eventually we'll figure it out.